Well, good morning, everybody. How's, how's everybody doing this morning? You know, I was thinking when I, as I came into the church and how it started to fill up with people, you know, that's, you know, with God, that's always important uh, to see people uh, having an effort and knowing why they come and knowing if they didn't come, you know, how could God be served? So if this church was empty this morning <laughs> and no one was here, you know, how, how would you be able to grow in your faith? And, um, and in the same way, you got to, you know, the reason why I'm bringing it up is that in our current situations that we're living in the world today, especially in the political sphere, um, a lot of people who serve God stop showing up and getting involved. And when you stop showing up and, and getting involved, the, the Lord can't use you to make a difference. And we all have to understand that the Lord gave us, those who are Christians, the Holy Spirit on how to, how would you say, make a difference in the surroundings that we're faced with. And the wisdom to how to make a difference. Amen. And... Um, Jesus said to his apostles, one of the first ones that were fishing, right? We know the story of, of Peter. Um, he says, uh, I'll make you fishers of men. Um, sometimes we forget that, you know, we come to, we, we are put in this world to do the will of God and not our will. And sometimes we can get very... Uh, emotional and passionate about things and our emotions will get away of the will of God and sometimes the way we we are unhappy about the things that are happening around us we would act in a more of an unwise way in an unchristian way and I was thinking to myself in regards to protesting and I thought to myself you know, I don't ever remember Jesus and his apostles ever protesting and I says well it's, it's, I see a lot of that happening nowadays, and I think to myself, well, what fruit comes out of it? If the Lord's not behind it, then what fruit will come out of it? So one thing he did command his apostles and, and all of the believers that followed him was to go out and preach the truth to the world, the truth. The most important thing is the truth. Um... And about two years ago, I decided that the Holy Spirit put in my heart, and I never really wanted to get involved in politics, but the Holy Spirit inspired me, well, Moses, I think you need to get involved and make a difference. So he put me in, in the path of some political leaders, you know, one individual's name is Senator Alex Antic, and um, I see uh, the Lord working with him. Um, on the inside, sometimes we only look on the outside of a person, and we don't look on how the Lord's using the person on the inside. And um, so I decided to, to help in the movement. And I said, well, I think one thing is important is we need to make Australia great again. How do we do that? We need to bring God back into the country. Amen. We need to bring God back into the political parties. Uh, the Liberal Party was founded on Christian values. So if people under, who knew who uh, Robert Menzies was, he was a son of a preacher. And he incorporated uh, prayer and, and uh, verses of scripture in Parliament. And that's one thing that is missing nowadays. Now throughout all history, God has always been involved. During the time of the kings, you know, there were good kings and there were bad kings. Right now, we have a bad one, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, um, another thing I would like to bring up, I know I don't want to keep it too long, but um, uh, if you go back to history of the Israelites, and during the time that they were growing in numbers, the Egyptians seen that they were growing in numbers, and they were outnumbering them, so they decided to put them into bondage and oppress them, but it was very gradual. It was so gradual, it was like a serpent coiling around them. They didn't see it, the serpent there. 
until it was too late, until they didn't realize, how do we get here? Because the Egyptians figured out how to strip them of their identity of who they were as a nation. So just like I see in Australia and many other countries right now, the enemy is working really hard to strip the people of their identities. So why I ask this question, what does it mean to be Australian? Who was your founding fathers? What did they stand up for? What were their values? And I ask this question a lot, and I seem not to get, get an answer. They say, I don't know. I don't know. And then you can take that further. What does it mean to be a Christian? What does it look like to be a Christian? In deed, in action, in thought. We know who, who Jesus is, but do we really know him in, in, our, in a relationship? So one thing I would like to read today, then I'll finish it off, is something that is important here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Now that's the, what the Holy Spirit has inspired me to do in the Liberal Party, is to do that. Be a light. Be of influence. You know, So people can see, I am a son of God. You know, I'm not going to be violent. I'm not going to have my own opinion. I am here for the truth, to bring the truth back in, in the politics. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So there's those that you're never going to be able to convince, no matter how much you preach. That's why it's important to be led by the Holy Spirit, not to lead it, but to be led. The Holy Spirit will take you to people who, who will be of, uh, make a difference. And I believe Alex Antic is one of those in, in Parliament today. Whose minds of God of this age has blinded. So there's a God of this age they blind, that have blinded everybody. Blinded of, they don't know who they are, what their identity is, what their purpose is. How can they make a difference between their neighbor? How do you love your neighbor and your brother? Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. So the image of God should shine on them. For we do not preach our, ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, but the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. Always got to give glory to God in everything that we do. So for me, when I'm a part of the Liberal Party, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it as though I'm doing it for God, for the Lord. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always caring about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus and the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. We want his life to be manifested in our body. What does that mean? Well, he says, what does it mean to be like Jesus on this earth? Well, we've got to manifest his deeds and actions so that everybody can see Jesus inside of us, all of our brothers and sisters. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal, mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life is in you. But since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Therefore, that he who was raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise up Jesus, and I will present us with you. For all things are for, the, for your sakes, 
that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving and abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. I know there's a lot of bad things happening, but we can't lose heart. We can't let it use us to bring us down. We can't be complainers. We've got to be doers. So doers meaning you got to get involved if you want to make a difference. If the Lord is calling you, this doesn't call everybody to do what I'm doing right now. Everybody has their purpose. But you got to be, pray about it and ask the Lord, where do you want me to do? Where do you want me to make a difference in a positive way so that you, people can see your glory and your light and want to come to it? Therefore, we do not lose heart even though the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So let us not get distracted with our focus, which is our salvation. But my, my recommendation to everybody is uh, pray about it. Pray about what Lord, how the Lord can use you to get involved to make a change to the people around you. Because there's a lot of evil coming. There's a lot of uh, woke Christianity coming as well. Yeah. Uh, meaning that there's people that are, you know, accepting homosexuality, these transgender identity uh, issues, uh, which is completely against God. But Satan's clever. He's a deceiving angel, yeah. right? Saying that, oh, God accepts everybody. No, I mean, if that was the case, he would have never destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> but he still had mercy upon if at least he told Abraham, kept telling him, if there's, Abraham told God, if there's 50, would you spare the city? He goes, yes. Then he goes down to 40. Then he goes down to 30. Then he gets down to five, and he still says, yes, even if there's five, I'll save, save the city. But uh, it came down to very few. So God is very merciful, and w but we also have to be merciful. So if the enemy is seeing us getting, being just like them in our you know, fight, then uh, we're not going to gain anything. 